God, it seems like a long time since we've talked, but it hasn't been. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is January 16th. It's Tuesday. I had to think about that. We had a long weekend, didn't we? So what do we do on this show? Well, basically, I share my due diligence with you for hot OTC and penny stocks. We're talking about stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market, major exchanges, or the OTC. And of course, I'm trying to share stocks with you that have the strongest possibility of taking gains. Now, how do I find stocks like that? Well, basically, I look for two things. First and foremost, I look for a chart that has heat. I want to see volume coming in, a breakout setup, or a long running surge. Not all at once, any one of those. When I find a chart that has heat, then I'll invest the time to go through the filings and the press releases, looking at the current information back to a month. And if I find a hot piece of news to match my hot chart, I've got a hot penny stock. Now, this isn't guaranteeing it's going to run, but it's increasing our chances. It's increasing the probabilities of getting a jump or a bump out of this in the next few days. And that's all we're looking for as day traders. And I've got some stocks like that to share with you right now. First one we're going to take a look at is Metalworks Platforms, ticker MWRK. Now, I like this stock for two good reasons. First off, that chart. Isn't it beautiful? That is a perfect atypical breakout chart in the midst of a breakout right now. Can't ask for anything better there. But her news is better. Oh my God, her news is big, folks. It's not only big for the company, it's big for the world. I think this is a, the beginning of a paradigm shift in the world. I'm not going to go into anything more now, but wait till we get to the news. This is exciting. So MWRK, she finished today just under 4.4 cents and just under 17% gains. She's on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. We like to call this the better tier. Better than what? Better than the pinks. They have no validated information. When you come up to the QB, you have to audit your financials. That's given us validated numbers. They've also got validated information, verified profile, and a transfer agent. So this is looking good between validated information and validated numbers. We've also got independent directors listed here. Now, the only reason I know you list independent directors in this site here is when you have serious intentions of uplisting. So they've probably got it written in one of their filings somewhere. God only knows where. So what is MetaWorks platform about? Well, this description there is a little light, so we're going to jump on over here into the most recent press release. MetaWorks Platform is an award-winning Web3 company that operates an AI-powered metaverse and spatial computing platform operating in the education, entertainment, and enterprise space. Those are three huge separate sectors, folks. The company owns, operates, and builds AI-powered blockchain. Metaverse and fintech platforms in the film, fan engagement, music, payments, and educational space, focused on leveraging Web3 technologies and partnerships to create disruptive technology based products, services, and companies. And they're living up to that disruptive. So, what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, we've got almost a 100% increase in volume, jumping from 235,000 shares up to 413,000 shares. Now, since we are talking about the OTC market and volume here, let me refresh this page and see how we finished. Oh, not a bad day. I'm looking up here, folks, at how many shares the entire OTC market sold today. Before COVID, we were doing between 60 and 70 billion shares a day. Yes, we were. Today, we did 6 billion shares, which actually is a really good day. I can't remember the last time I've seen it over 5.5 billion. So this is a good day. And out of that, this company got just about a half million of them. So they got 1 12th of all the shares sold today. This company got 1 12th of them. Share structure for MWRK. Outstanding share count, just under 110 million. Restricted shares, what the management own, they got 47 million of them. What's left to put on the open market is the float, about 62 million. Not a bad float, folks. Anything under 100 million really is not a bad float at all. 
Yes, we'd like to see a low float 10 million, 5 million, but that's not bad at all. Market cap for the company, we are currently at about $4 million. Financials for Metalworks. Well, they have been growing except for COVID. They were at $250,000. We got to add three zeros behind any of these numbers on any of these charts. Dropped during COVID to 190, pounced back up to 472,000, but oh my God, look at how much money they lost. $1.6 million. There's got to be a story behind that. And then in 2022, the revenues went way up, jumping from about a half a million to 1.8 million. And better than that, they fixed that profit margin from 1.6 million deficit to almost 600,000 in profit. Quarterly reports, they're slowing down. They were doing, what was it, 1.8 million annually. The trailing 12 months, we've got less than $800,000. But they are bringing home profits. Thank God for that. Balance sheet for the company. Not much in the bank. They got $12,000 in the bank. Total assets, about five and a half million. Total liabilities, that's less. Less than half, actually. Just over two million. So we do have positive stockholder equity of $3.4 million in this company. So we are not holding a bag. Disclosures for the company. All right, we've got an SC13D here that was just filed recently. This is what's filed whenever a new investor comes in and they buy so many shares, they actually own a percentage of the company. Now, it looks like there's two of them here, but there's only one. You see that A behind the D? That stands for amended. So there was something wrong with this one. They fixed it and they put that filing out again. And in this, they tell us that James, right up here is who the person or company is, just bought himself about 9.2 million shares and he is now the proud owner of almost 8% of the company. Anytime you get a new investor coming into the company, that's a good thing. Then we got a bunch of Form 4s here. Those could be helpful. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's stock. But as traders, we're primarily interested when they buy them or sell them because they can get them in a lot of different ways. Well, none of these are purchases or sales. So we're really not interested in diving into them. So let's take a look at that news. Now we do have a lot of news over here, but we're not gonna dive into all of it. I have two current pieces I wanna share with you, but I do wanna headline this because it's more or less a list of their AI products. We're back here in August. And I want you to pay attention to this date, August 24th. The next piece of news is October 10th. The two pieces of news are connected. Back in August, the company was awarded a contract to develop a Web3 Music IP intellectual property management platform and mobile app. Well, ta-da! Two months later, introducing ARC, the revolutionary music IP protection and sharing app powered by blockchain. Ask and you shall receive. That was fast, two months and it's out there. Then in November, MetaWorks platform launches Spatials.com, a visionary AI powered metaverse platform unveiling the future of education, finance and entertainment. We are moving away from textual AI like ChatGPT where I type to it and it types back to me to visionary. It can see me, it can show me things, it can create visuals for me on the fly. Here in December, the company introduces Echo. Echo is the AI-powered metaverse chatbot for us, the investors. <laughs> As you're gonna see in one of the pieces of news, what this does is gets all the information out there about the company, from the news presses to articles and the stock, and then creates its own content and shares that with us through the metaverse. Then we've got two pieces of news here we're gonna jump into. MetaWorks extends AI-powered chatbot offering by adding AI-generated videos with the launch of Stockholder AI. This thing makes videos on the fly. You're talking to it, it says it to itself, I think you need to see this. So it just makes a video in less than a minute virtually, and boom, you're looking at a freshly made video just for you. And the last one that we're gonna look at, MetaWorks Platforms announces the signing of an agreement to create a series of AI-powered metaverse classes for New Jersey Charter School. So looking at that first piece of news that came out January 8th, 
They tell us that Metalworks has begun rolling out a full AI-powered investor relations offering that now has the ability to ingest the company's news and stock information daily and in near real time use AI to generate video press releases, content, and more. At MetaWorks, we have set our focus on a few niche markets, finance, education, and entertainment. And we feel AI can solve problems, improve lives, and help grow our businesses right now, not years from now. Mr. Gallagher, the president of the company, said, it's incredible how fast this technology is evolving. Well, yeah, that's because we don't have to write code for it anymore. AI is evolving itself. The product offering we have access to today is light years ahead of what we were working on just a few months ago. We expect to begin onboarding our first customers for the AI-powered IR program this month. We've also begun introducing the AI-powered chat technology to educational institutions, teachers, tutors, and healthcare professionals with very solid early results. And that other piece of news, this one here came out on the 16th. They tell us that the company proudly announces the signing of a groundbreaking memorandum of understanding with a New Jersey-based charter school opening for the year 2024-2025. They say the agreement calls for MetaWorks and the New Jersey-based charter school to collaborate on the development of a series of classes that leverage AI-powered avatars and chatbots with the Metaverse. Students will be immersed in the AI-powered Metaverse classes to develop critical skills essential for success in the 21st century. These skills, they will include problem solving, critical thinking, digital literacy, and adaptability. Whereas reading, writing, and arithmetic, they weren't even covered, were they? they the uh, president of the company says, we see this collaboration as the beginning of a new era in education that leverages the power of AI-powered metaverse classes to provide an unparalleled and engaging learning experience for students. The collaborative AI-powered avatars and chatbots will serve as companions to the school's teachers and students enhancing the learning process through personalized interactions, real-time feedback, and dynamic content delivery. Imagine stepping into historical events, exploring the cosmos, or diving into the intricacies of science, all within the immersive environments of the metaverse powered by AI. This unparalleled level of engagement will enhance comprehension and retention levels while making a process of learning more enjoyable for students. Folks, no two curriculums are going to be the same for students anymore. What one is being taught is not going to be what another one is being taught. AI will learn how to teach you what you need to learn. And it's going to be able to make videos on the fly for you. Images. It can take you into space. It can tell you a story. Matter of fact, if you jump on over here to Twitter, I want to... There we go. Hello there. This is AI Don from Metalworks. Can Today, you hear that? Metalworks announced the launch I don't know if you can hear that. AI. I'm going to turn the volume it's off because I can. What you're looking at there, folks, that is an AI-generated video. And it doesn't take four hours to make like mine do. Honestly, these are made in seconds, maybe a minute or two. Everything you see there is AI-generated, fabricated. Nothing is real. All the text, the background, that person you're looking at, the voice, all of it is fabricated. None of it is real. However, it looks real, and we respond to it as if it's real. And that's what AI can do. At a flash, it can help us learn by communicating with us the way we want to learn. I think this is going to change the world. I think it's going to change the way education is done, for good and bad. First off, we're not going to have to worry about overcrowding of schools anymore. When you put on your goggles and go into your metaverse world, you are getting personalized attention. You don't have to worry about the teacher coming over here anymore and talking to you. Plus, you're going to get a curriculum that works for you. But you've got to look at the other side of the coin, too. What are we going to do with the teachers? What are they going to be doing while everybody's got their headsets on being taught? Are we only going to need custodians in schools now and not teachers? I don't know. And are we going to like that? Maybe not. 
But can we stop progress? No, I think this is where we're going, folks. I think AI will become the education for the rest of our lives. Right now, we are going to watch the teachers losing their jobs and going to school to be a teacher just isn't going to be worth it anymore. That's just one man's opinion. All right, so now that you got some information about the company, let's go get some information about that chart. Let's do some charting now on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. So we're looking at MetaWorks platform, ticker MWRK. This is a six-month, four-hour view. We got a high bubble six months ago of just about 18 cents, and we got a low at the end of December of one penny. She was well above the 200 way back here, fell underneath that and just fell all the way down to this low. And you can see we've had some strong volume coming into the picture here recently. Off of this low, she bounced back up, came right back down to that low again. She is right there and bounced off of this low this time across all the SMAs, getting across that 50, showing some excitement, bouncing coming back down and slamming off of that nine day SMA through the 200 with this big long wick. Came back down and bounced through it again. Third time, she put herself up there. And she's been bouncing on it a couple times, a few times pushing down to make sure it was strong. And now two times looking like she's getting ready to launch. Our 200 day SMA is just now starting to go flat, folks. The most vulnerable time for a breakout. All of our SMAs, from big to little, have all turned up and are starting to climb. Oscillators, every single one of them is pushing up right now. PPO is strong, MACD is strong, RSI is up there at 69. Now I do want to point out something here. If you look down here at my RSI, you see I've got a line drawn here. I drew this a while back across the tops of these and it just keeps on going. Whenever she breaks out above this line on my RSI, she seems to show a lot more strength. We had a little bit of break right here. You go straight up, you see we had a bounce right there. Here she broke out. We had a bounce there. And here, once she got over it, I knew she was going to climb. Just took off. When she falls underneath this, I know that it's probably weak and going to fall. So this is a resistance I use on my RSI, which is quite handy for me. Coming down to our 20-day, one-hour view. Shrink this back down. Close enough. <laughs> All right, looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. We have got a low bubble there of that one cents. She bounced up, came back down right to a penny again. Bounced off of that. Look at this. Perfect landing on our 200-day SMA. Jumped up, landed on it hard, went sideways. Dead center of this bar. That's what I like to see when you fall Stop at the center point. Don't, don't come down any lower. She went sideways, took a dip down to the 200, tagged it and the 20, and launched, folks, from about two cents up to five cents. You're looking at 150% profit that you just put in your pocket. She came back down to the nine, slipped underneath it a little bit, but wasn't going any deeper, and now she is pushing up. And all of our SMAs have crossed the 200, which is completely flat right now. Osculators, they're a bit mixed up right now. They're showing strength on the chart, but they have been going up and down. Our PPO is going sideways right now, but well above her pink line. MACD is underneath her line, and she's going sideways. We need her to break out. And our RSI is taking a drop, but it's still over my resistance, right? And she's at 61. Looking at our five-day, five-minute chart. Well, that's the kind of charts we like to see, a low bubble in this corner and a high bubble over here. We are at 1.8 cents above the 50, above the 20, bouncing on that 20. She got her high here, came down and did a rubber ball bounce on the 20, came underneath and came up with a big push, like a rubber ball would out of the water, right? And she didn't even come back down to the 20. She stayed up there and she's laying on her nine-day SMA, with all of our osculators being very cool, not cold, they've just gone plants and everything is going sideways right now, waiting for the next stage. I think the next stage is a bump, folks. I like MWRK. Volume has been popping here, popping there. The next pop could get it to be the big breakout we've been looking for. MWRK, they're going to change the world with this news, folks. Let me tell you what, education via AI 
you knew it was coming. Put it on your watch list. <laughs> Our next hot penny stock comes from the major exchange. This is Seals Q Corporation, ticker LAES. Now, just like the last company, she's got a hot atypical breakout chart. Volume coming in, breaking out right now. It looks great. And they just had big news come out today. News that I'm sure is going to revolutionize their business and could revolutionize the sector. So, sales finished today at $2.60 with just over 15% gains. This is a penny stock on the NASDAQ, which comes with benefits being on the major exchange. You can trade this for free. There's no transaction fees like there is on the OTC. You can trade pre-market, after-market. You can never do that with OTC. And bottom line, folks, there's just more volume and more money up on the major exchanges compared to the OTC. So yeah, I like trading penny stocks on the major exchanges. So what is SEALS about? Well, we're going to stick to this little description right here. SEALS Core develops and sells cryptography-based microchips within quantum extension to public and private sectors. Its technology includes post-quantum features for the Internet of Things market, including secure authentication, brand protection, network communications, future FIDO evolutions, and web-connected smart devices. Whew. These descriptions are getting harder and harder to read. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Oh man, that's what we like to see. That's at least 700% increase in our volume, going from 7.5 million up to over 52 million today. Share structure for seals? Oh no, we can't trust that. Everything looks funky, doesn't it? They're telling us that they only have 100 shares outstanding. No, folks, they don't. And I don't know why it's there. So I did dive into the most recent financial, which came out in November. And I found it in there. It was written a couple times. 1.5 million. Yes, it is super low. It isn't 100, but 1.5 million is ridiculous. That is the outstanding share count. Now, the float, it's going to be no higher than 1.5 million, but by NASDAQ's rules, it cannot go under a million. So as long as the float is over a million, they're not in any trouble. If it goes under a million, they're going to have to do a public offering and put more shares on the market. So as it is, right now, we have a super duper minute float of no more than 1.5 million. Market cap. Well, the market cap is figured out by multiplying the price times the share count. $2.60 times 100 shares is 226 bucks. That's not right either. It is 1.5 million, so it's going to be like 3.3 uh, million, something like that. Financials for the company. Well, they're making money, and it's growing too. They're turning up the steam. Over the last three years, they've jumped from 14 million to 16 million to 23 million, and their profits are growing right along with them. Quarterly reports. Ah, they don't give us any quarterly reports because they're on the major exchange. Sometimes you can get the semi annuals every six months. They ain't got those either, but they do have a balance sheet. So let's jump into that. Cash and cash equivalents, what they've got in the bank, about 4 million. Total assets, about $21.5 million. Total liabilities, ooh, just under $21.5 million. So, yes, we do have positive stockholder equity, though it's not very much. We've got $212,000. At least we're not holding a bag. But, you know, folks, being day traders, we're really not concerned with their financials. We're really not concerned with the management. I mean, honestly, as day traders, we're getting in and out so fast that none of that really matters. We would like a good share count and a catalyst and a hot chart. That's really all we need, right? All right, let's see what we've got over here for disclosures. We've got a couple of 6Ks over here. One of them is about a $10 million investment, and the other one is about their financials. So let's just jump on over into that news. So over here, from the financials, we've got the same information coming on. I've gone back only a few days here, folks. I am only back to the 10th of this month. SEALS launches a revolutionary on-package semiconductor 
provisioning service shortening lead time to four weeks. I do want to dive into this one, but we'll headline the rest here. Seals announces full year 2023 preliminary unaudited revenue of $30 million. $30 million. That's breaking everything we just saw. I think 27 was as high as we saw before, marking a 29% increase year over year. Then on the 11th, the company announces closing of the second $10 million tranche of convertible notes. This is money being invested into them. These are for convertible notes and warrants. Now you need to take concern with the warrants because warrants will convert into shares somewhere down the road, sometime within five years. So if they bought, oh, I don't know, 100 million warrants, when they cash them in, there'll be 100 million more shares on the market at that time. So it's not diluting anything now, but down the road it will. And the most recent piece of news that came out today, the company will launch Seal Coin with Google Cloud as a technology provider. So I want to jump into the bottom piece of news and the top piece of news here for you. So we're not going to go too deep into this. I just want you to have a little bit of insight to what we're talking about. Seals Q launches a revolutionary on-package semiconductor provisioning service shortening lead time to only four weeks. Through this new service, Seals Q is now able to offer its clients the option to personalize off-the-shelf secure elements from its Vault IC range with certificates and keys and deliver the preloaded chips in less than four weeks, packed in reels from 1,000 to 20,000 units. Now, I'm not going to pretend I understand what they're talking about here, but I can tell it's a big deal. I can see the lead time for four weeks for what they're doing is a big deal. So that sounds like juicy news to me. And the other piece of news that came out today, they tell us that the company today announced the launch of Sealcoin AI with Google Cloud as a technology provider. Seals Q is a subsidiary of WiseKey International Holdings, which is on the NASDAQ, ticker WKEY. Sealcoin is designed to establish a robust economy specifically for billions of internet-driven devices, enabling them to exchange not just data, but also currency seamlessly. Now hold on, this isn't the same thing as everything we've been reading. Seals Q has an install base of over 1.6 billion semiconductors that will gradually benefit from the Seal Coin. Seal Coin is representing a significant leap forward in the Internet of Things industry. It is revolutionary cryptocurrency protocol that is tailored for machine to machine economy. It facilitates seamless data and currency exchange among billions of internet connected devices, enabling Internet of Things structures from various companies to interact autonomously. This innovation transcends conventional currency exchange, establishing a complex network of Internet of Things enabled transactions and services. While individual traders can engage with Sealcoin as with other cryptocurrencies, its core value actually lies in transforming economic operations and communications with the Internet of Devices. Folks, that's really what most cryptocurrencies are about. There are coins that you can invest in, but each coin represents an eco-economy, an economy, a micro-economy. It's supporting something, whether it be investment in properties or uh, I can't even think of all the different industries they cover. But when you buy into one coin, you are supporting an eco-environment for one particular sector. The introduction of seal coin marks a pivotal moment in the evolution of M to M payments reshaping the digital transaction landscape landscape in the internet of things sphere and folks this is what's growing now the internet of things we've been talking about this for a long time and it's been creeping up on us we got backtracked with covid and couldn't move forward for a while and this is where 5g comes into application we need this information to move quickly but we're going to see more and more innovation for machine to machine and again I'm not going to pretend I completely understand what they're talking about here, but they are saying this is new. This hasn't been done before and it should be big. So again, we've got hot news on two different realms here with this company, 
and we've got a hot chart that is breaking out right news and all you need is a semi hot catalyst even a stale catalyst can get a hot chart moving and this chart is hot taking a look at ticker laes this is seals q we're looking at a six month four hour view now i did peek in on the one year chart and i noticed that she just came on the market in may this is her high since she's been on the market, $35 six months ago, and she has fallen to under a buck at 91 cents here in December. Now, as you can see, she was going sideways for a long time doing nothing because that 200 was just too far away. She wasn't going to waste her energy. Well, once it got close, she started working her way towards it, sneakily coming up to it, and then once she got here, she pounced hard. She went from $1.18 up to three dollars and ninety cents whoa you're looking at well over 250 percent run then she fell right back to the 50 and then just walks over the 200 like it's nothing she walked across the 200 for a few days and then for the last four days she has been climbing and as you can see the volume has been very strong these last few days getting stronger and stronger all of our smas are all climbing right now above the 200 which itself is also climbing the price is floating on this nine day sma now let me back up just a little bit here let's see if we can get some resistances i see we got one back here these are only going to be close because everything's so small i see we've got one right there too yep and then obviously we're going to have one on the top of there so let's come on in and see where we're sitting here with our new supports and resistances so we have just broke this resistance right here at two dollars and 31 cents we argued with it a little bit have bounced off of that and we are now working towards three dollars and 65 cents that's the next resistance the way i've been looking at it and that is right underneath this high and just above this high and that looks like where she's pushing right now folks so we could see another dollar bump on this Osculators are all kind of cool right now. They were strong. Everything was climbing, but everything is more or less going sideways right now. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So we've got a low here of, is that a dollar? I think that is. That's one dollar. I thought it was 10 cents. One dollar going flat. Had that huge breakout down to the 200. She's bounced on it here bounced on it there and here, and then she launched herself. When she did fall off of this high of $3.52, she came down to her 50, not to 200. Pushed herself back up on top of that 50. You can see she is laying on that, no doubt about it. Once she got up to the 20, you see once she tapped it, got close to it, she advanced. Boom, lots of excitement. Back down to the nine so she can start walking again. She pushed this up to $3.21 today, falling back to her nine-day SMA, pushing off of that, and she's gone center on our price bars here. And that's where I like to see things end up, is in the center or above. Osculators still really going sideways right now. Everything is still kind of cool, but all of our SMAs, including our nine-day, are still pushing up. Five-day, five-minute. We've got an uptrend here. We're going from $1.23 underneath the 200. Once she got on top of it, she took a jump sideways after market, pre market, a nice bounce pre market. Came down right at the bell, bounced to a new high on this day, and then came back down to what is it, or 50 or 20? It's kind of tough to tell. They're both knotted together right here. But she isn't coming down to the 200. That's what's really impressive. She did tag it right here, and once she tagged it, she felt confident that she could climb. Vroom! She jumped all the way up here, then had a solid crash right after market. Went sideways, took another dip, and now she is pounding up again, falling back to that 200-day SMA. You can see she is fully respecting this, folks. All of these other SMAs, they are on top of the price. We don't like to see that. But you can see every single one of them is turning right now, which is going to create a current to suck this price right on in and start to climb again. Looking at our oscillators, we just had a crossover on our PPO percentage price oscillator, which is a lot like your MACD. You want the blue line on top of the other line. 
Our MACD has just crossed the signal line. That's given us some strength. I see aftermarket activity here. And we are at 52 on our RSI. I'm liking it, folks. Again, you've got news here that is revolutionary. I'm not quite sure exactly what it's all about, and it's working with semiconductors. And you know, not too long ago, semiconductors were all the buzz. We were all looking at these semiconductor companies. Well, here you go, one with new innovation and short lead times. I'm liking it. Maybe you will too. Ticker L-A-E-S. Got another hot penny stock from the major exchange for you here. This is SASE, ticker S-A-S-I. This is Sigma Additive Solutions. And yet again, we have got a hot atypical breakout chart. Not only is she set up to break out, but you see those big bounces there? She set up for a big bounce. And it's good timing, folks. We have hot news that came out today. It's a double banger. They just closed an acquisition for a new subsidiary that they're going to be changing their operations towards. And they just sold an asset for this change. Everything looks good right now. So Sassy finished today at $3.84 with just over 12.5% gains. And she too is on the NASDAQ. We got a pretty decent description here, but we got a better one in the news press. Sigma Additive Solutions has historically been a provider of in-process quality assurance solutions to the additive manufacturing industry. However, Sigma has been specializing in the development and commercialization of real-time monitoring and analytics known as PrintWrite 3D for 3D metal and polymer advanced manufacturing technologies. PrintWrite 3D detects and classifies defects and anomalies in real time during the manufacturing process, enabling significant cost savings and production efficiencies by reducing waste, increasing yield, and shortening cycle times. So quality assurance is what they're all about. Their programs watch the machines to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to so that they don't make a hundred products wrong and you end up having to throw them all away and you wasted the time as well. So what was the relative volume around Sassy today? Oh my God. Dun, 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 dun. It's bad, folks. She dropped hard from 632,000 to under 50,000 shares. And I didn't see any bad news today. Share structure for Sassy. Well, this is good news. I know that doesn't look right, but it is correct. 780,000 shares is all they have in the outstanding share count. I verified it by looking at the most recent financial. Now, it is a problem because the float is never higher than the outstanding share count. So we're under a million in our float, which is a minimum criteria for the NASDAQ. So sooner or later, they're going to have to do a public offering and put more shares on the market. Now, I haven't seen a public offering, nor have I seen anything from the NASDAQ telling them they're in hot water. Now, I haven't done a deep dive. They may have. But as it stands right now, for us day traders, we have a remarkable, super duper, unheard of small float of under 1 million on a NASDAQ stock. I'm liking that. Market cap currently is 2.6 million. Financials for the company? Well, they are making money and they are making profits, but they took a big drop over the last year. 2021, they were at 1.6 million. They dropped down to 630,000 in 2022. Thank God they were still making a profit. Quarterly, well, that's changed. And that's kind of weird. They jumped from June to September from 97,000 up to 141,000. But they lost all their profits, dropping from 60000 to minus 34000 <laughs> Balance sheet for the company, what's that look like? Cash in the bank, we got about a half a million dollars. Total assets, just under $3 million at two point eight. Oh, and our liabilities is under a million at 860,000 shares, which means we've got positive stockholder equity here of just under $2 million. We always want some stockholder equity. Nobody wants to be holding a bag. Looking at our disclosures. Right, we've got a couple of 8Ks here. And really, we don't need to look at any of these. 
One is about selling their assets. That is covered in the news. And then the other one, they created some new shares. They are F shares. We trade the A shares, A common shares. They have created the F shares. So let's just jump on over into that news then. So I am going back here to the beginning of January, the 3rd. Sigma Additive Solutions jumps 56%, names new CEO on completing next trip acquisition. Yeah, she jumped. I think those big bounces are because of the low float. I think that float of under a million, anytime volume comes in, boom, we get a jump. Well, here on the third, they say Sigma Additive Solutions completes acquisition of travel technology company, Next Trip Holdings. And we'll get the information about that by looking at the most current piece of news that came out today. They tell us that Sigma Additive Solutions completes quality assurance software asset sale to Divergent Technologies. Company focuses transitions to Next Trip and travel operations with a clean balance sheet. That's why they need to sell something, pay off that debt. Today, the company announced it has closed the sale of its intellectual property assets related to its additive quality assurance product to Divergent Technologies in conjunction with its recent acquisition of Next Trip Holdings. On October 6, 2023, Sigma entered into an asset purchase agreement with Divergent Technologies to sell certain Sigma assets consisting primarily of patents, software code, and other intellectual property to Divergent Technologies for a purchase price of $1.6 million, with the closing expected subsequent to the acquisition of Next Trip. The combination of the acquisition and sale of assets was targeted to maximize shareholder value, using the proceeds to eliminate legacy debt and contingent liabilities associated with the wind down of Sigma's historical business. This leaves the company with no debt other than zero interest loans from the company's current chairman and CEO, thus giving the company a clean path forward. Bill Kirby, the CEO of Sigma says, with the close of this acquisition completed, the sale of Sigma legacy assets streamlines the company to allow us to focus 100% of our efforts on our next trip travel operations. Now, next trip is no fly-by-night operations. They're not new. They are working with over 2 million hotels around the world. They are working with over 200 blue chip travel agencies. So they are well connected. This company got a real good deal and that's where they are focusing all of their energies now. All right, now that you've got some information about the company, God, I love charting. Let's go take a look at another hot chart. Oh, she is sassy. This is ticker S-A-S-I, Sigma Additive Solutions. We are looking at a six month, four hour view. It was six months ago, we had a high of $11. And as you can see, she is underneath the 200, but she breaks through that oftentimes with some huge jumps, folks. This one's going from 678 up to 1055. This huge giant one went from four and a quarter up to almost 11 bucks. This one from two and a half up to eight. Folks, these are giant jumps. These are multiple hundreds, two, three, 400% gains in these jumps. Here recently, We've had one go from 270 up to 530. And the last one here went from $3 up to over $6. That was 100% gains, folks. So as you can see, she has been on a downtrend with a lot of activity. But all this time, the 200 has been far too steep for her to get on. Now here it's starting to flatten out. You would think she would start running here, but she is still falling. So let's zoom in. She ain't falling no more. This 200 got flat right there, folks. Right here where she had this huge giant pounce. You can see she was falling. On the other side, she is going up. So she jumped there over 100%, came back down, slamming that 200 to make sure it was solid, and then she jumped again. Now she's come back down, rubber ball bounce. She went underneath the 200, very quickly turned around, and she's coming back up. She's already put a wick over the 200 and tagged the 20. All of our SMAs are pointed up right now. She looks like she's ready to climb. Problem, where is our volume? We just don't have any volume, but look what we got. 
When the volume came in, we had a jump. And it wasn't much volume. It's just this little volume that had it jump. We had more volume on the sell than we did the buy. Same thing here. Just a spark of volume came in and we had this huge lurch. So we don't need a lot of volume to get this thing to run. Our oscillators, that was a huge drop for what? Six days there. Today we're bouncing back. She is showing that on her oscillators, that she was on a long downtrend, and right now everything is bouncing back. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view, $2.80 underneath every single SMA. Right here, she is starting to go flat. Our 200-day SMA, she gets on top of it, bounces, works her way up over it, and she does take a rubber ball bounce here and then catapults herself way the heck up and this is after market hours folks this is why you want to be paying attention to aftermarket pre-market hours with your nasdaq and your new york stock exchange stocks there was a lot more activity after market than there was the entire day now even if you can't be there you can still put orders in you know you can have standing orders to buy or sell and you may say Okay, well, I'm at a price here of three bucks. This thing likes to jump like crazy. So, you know, let's put in a sale for $5 just in case it hits it after market. So put in your standing order, but remember, it is a extended period. If you put it in as every other order, a day trade, it's not gonna go through even if the price hits your mark. You've gotta make sure you get extended hours in there, day plus extension, good till canceled plus extension. And some brokers actually use the words aftermarket, pre-market. Make sure to get those in there. So she's come back down. She's had that rubber ball bounce and she looks promising right now, folks. She is pushing up just like our oscillators. We got a crossover right now in our PPO. Crossover on our signal line with our MACD. Look at all of our green bars accumulating. And our RSI, wow, it was way down there, folks. She was down under 30, down at 27, and now she's pushed herself up to 52. I don't like to see it under 55, but that's a heck of a lot better than under 30. Coming down to that five-day, five-minute view. Oh, that don't look too pretty. Five days ago, we were just under five bucks at $4.90 above the 200. She wrestled with it a little bit here, lost it, and slowly has been dribbling down underneath her 50-day SMA, falling quick and hard here like a pounce, uh, a crouch before a pounce. I say this a lot, folks, and you see it on charts a lot, just like a cat. The cat will be walking and then see something up there. Well, it can't jump higher until it crouches lower crouch before the pounce so she's dribbling real slow here and then all of a sudden takes a quick drop did we have any reason for it not that i could see she fell down to a low of 317 bounced up came down to it a second time that's it second time she hit that exact mark and she shot up through all of her smas crushing the 50 tagging the 200 falling back to only the nine and then riding that up to the 200. She's wrestling with the 200 right now, but she's there. Here comes our 20-day SMA, just about ready to cross our 200. That is gonna be a golden cross. That's gonna put some more strength into the price rise. And look at our 200. Our 200 is just about ready to go flat. This looks good, folks. All of our SMAs are turned up and climbing. Volume is here. We would like to see more volume, right? That's what gets this thing running and pumping. So she is at the breakout point, and with the volume the way it is, not being there, as soon as it comes in, we could see a jump of 100, 200, 300% gains, folks. I'm not kidding. So I would be putting SASI on my watch list, and as soon, as soon as you see volume come in, folks, the float is so small on this, it's not going to take long for it to run. And remember, oh, you can. This is a NASDAQ stock. You can get in with a market order. If you're having a hard time catching a price, you see it running, and you keep putting in a price lower, you can throw a hook out there and just catch a passing train. <laughs> Whatever the price is, it'll give it to you. But doing that, you never know what price you could get. You could end up at the very ceiling before it falls. So be careful. But I like SASI for a day trader's dream. Yes, I do. But folks, you've got more due diligence to do. 
Don't just lean on everything I've told you because I didn't tell you everything. You know I didn't. There's a lot more to know. Even though this video is closing in on an hour, there's still more due diligence. So please, folks, before you invest your money because of something I said, follow it up with your own due diligence. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.